Good morning. November 24th. It's Thanksgiving and we're just about to leave Abeche. Abeche is right here. And to go to Gareda, we'll be going north a little bit and then east over this little road. And from here, after Gareda, we will be going back up to Iriba, which is north, right here. And then uh, from there to Oricasini, which is right on the border with Darfur. This is uh, Akai. Yeah. He, he will be joining us for the trip. He is uh, uh, an interpreter and knows three languages, so we're really uh, happy to have him. The UNHCR recommended that we travel on a convoy with uh, two of their cars. It's a little more secure. They say that there are no major security concerns, but that it's always good to travel in groups, never after five, that uh, there is always uh, reports of sporadic uh, attacks and they're not sure by whom. So um, we hope we don't get to film any of that type of excitement. about uh, two hours into our trip and as you can see it is very bumpy no sleeping on this uh, trip to Gareda um, we've seen about two or three villages along the way uh, lots of uh, goats some cows you see uh, women and girls on donkeys uh, boys and men on horses that's one thing you can notice and make your own conclusions um, it's a beautiful country, semi-desert. It reminds me a little bit about uh, where I grew up in Monterrey, Mexico. Except that uh, no nopales here. trouble here. We're now in uh, Gareda, and uh, we met up with Martin, who, uh, to remind you, is a member of CCF. And there are two camps here uh, in the vicinity of this area. This is actually a, a Chadian community. And uh, all of the uh, NGOs that work in the two camps, Mile and Karunga, I think, if I have it correctly, uh, are based out of here, which is called Gareda. And right now we are walking towards the care office uh, compound. See if they have any uh, room at their inn for us to stay at. And if you want to walk around, we'll show you what care offers. Uh, it has been highly recommended by different people to come here. Here's where they have food. It's included in the lodging, three meals a day. 
and I'll show you. They even have TV and a place to sit. It smells really good. I know you can't catch smell through the camera, camera but we haven't had breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And it's 4.42 uh, p.m. right now, so this is a, a good place. <laughs> Over here we have the bathroom or the latrine, which we will be using. Uh, I don't, do we want to, okay, well I'll knock, knock first. This is it. I don't know how it works. <laughs> don't ask me, Chris. <laughs> Sorry. I think you've used a few of these I before. Can, I can do a demonstration later on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then over here is the shower. Well, not a shower. Uh, what would you call it? Uh, it's just a private area for bathing. You, you have buckets that are prepared with water. Okay. And uh, when you're ready to take a shower, you take your bucket in there, and you there's a little, typically a little dipper. Okay. And uh, you bathe yourself, yeah. and somebody's so in there. I think. Basically, a private area. Very nice. These huts uh, with the green tarps are the bungalows, and they're usually for two guests. Uh, we're gonna accommodate three since uh, Akai, our translator, is gonna be with us. And we'll show you a little bit. And this over here is Bungalow 1. And it is our bungalow. It'll be our home for the next at least two days. And if things work out and we feel comfortable and the people in the camps feel comfortable with us, we'll stay a little bit longer and do more, show you more about life in the camp. So a little dark. They do have electricity. It runs till about 11. So we're going to be charging our multiple machines during the day. Uh, since going to the camps, all we need is the camera. So uh, we'll leave our computers charging and then we'll come in the afternoon, edit, and shoot it up to you. <laughs>